How are you guys today? It's good to see you. I don't really see you, but you're seeing me, but you know. Um, so, if you saw in the comments yesterday, um, <laughs> I had a request for snow stories because it is snowy here. And um, it got, it was negative eight before, so um, I am going to start with a snow story today. And it is the biggest snowman ever. Maybe some of you are making snowmen today. Um, by Stephen Kroll and illustrated by Jenny Bassett. And um, this is actually like a, there's there's the biggest pumpkin ever, and these two mice make friends in that one, and they're still friends at the beginning of this story too. On a bright winter day, the mayor of Mouseville announced the town snowman contest. Woohoo! Whoever makes the biggest snowman will win a prize, he's, he declared. All the mice were excited. The judging of the contest will take place in two weeks, said the mayor. Good luck to all of you. I'm going to make a big snow princess, said Penelope. I'm going to make a snow Martian, said James. I'm going to make the biggest snowman ever, said Clayton, the house mouse. His friend Desmond, the field mouse, frowned. No, you're not. I'm going to make the biggest snowman ever. Oh, yeah, said Clayton. Oh, yeah, said Desmond. That night, it snowed and snowed. Huge drifts covered the roads and fields. It was a beautiful beginning for a snowman contest. In town, Penelope began her snow princess and James began his snow Martian. Out in the country, Clayton and Desmond began their snowmen. Clayton made a snowball and rolled it across the ground. The more he rolled, the bigger it got, and before long, he had a large base for a snowman. Not too far away, Desmond was doing the same thing. These pages are really sticky. The next day, Clayton made a huge snowball for the snowman's belly. Not so far away, Desmond did the same. That night, Clayton had his dad come out to see the snowman. Dad scratched his head. I don't know, son. It's going to be big, but I'm not sure it will be the biggest. Clayton smiled up at him. I'm just getting started, he said. Dad whispered in his ear. If you want it, you want to work faster, use a wheelbarrow to carry the snow. A little later, Desmond brought out his Uncle Vernon. I don't know, said Uncle Vernon. It's going to be big, but I don't know if it'll be the biggest. Desmond smiled. I am just getting started, he said. Vernon whispered in his ear. If you want to work faster, use a wheelbarrow to carry the snow. The next day, Clayton filled his wheelbarrow with snow. He piled the snow onto the snowman. Then he rolled another snowball for the snowman's head. Not too far away, Desmond did the same. A few days later, Desmond ran into town to look at James's snow Martian and Penelope's snow princess. Hmm, he said, all of our snow people are the same size. That afternoon, Clayton did the same thing. The next day, while working on his snowman, Clayton had an idea. He brushed the snow off his gloves and walked toward Desmond. At that same moment, Desmond had an idea, and he brushed the snow off his gloves and walked toward Clayton. 
they bumped into each other and fell down. I have an idea, said Clayton. I have an idea, said Desmond. We should do this together, said Clayton. No one said we couldn't, said Desmond. First, they rolled each part of Desmond's snowman over to the middle of the field. Then they rolled each of Clayton's snowman over. They piled the snowballs on top of one another. Clayton dropped a floppy hat on the snowman's head. Desmond added a long scarf, huge coal eyes, and a giant carrot for her nose. When they were done, they had built the biggest snowman ever. <clears throat> The morning of the contest, field mice on snowmobiles brought the judges out into the country. You both win the prize, said the mayor, handing Clayton and Desmond a large wedge of Swiss cheese. Let the celebration begin. Everyone gathered to dance around the snowman, drink hot chocolate, and eat donuts. We did it, said Clayton and Desmond, jumping up and down. And we did it together. It's so much more fun when you get to do things together. Hi, so maybe if you have brothers and sisters, you can go out and build a snowman together today. Um, the other one that I'm going to read today is called Bumble, the bear with big ideas by Marty McGee and um, C. Bisco. And this one is kind of the opposite of a snow one. Look at get some nice spring flowers going in this one. Bumble splashed across the stream and trotted up the hill. Grandma would be waiting with cakes and cups of tea served with lots of honey. The little bear tapped on Grandma's door, and no one came. He knocked again. Where could she be? he wondered. Three forest birds flew down. Quiet, said Crow. She's sleeping, you know. She can't be sleeping, Bumble declared. Grandma Bear is waiting for me. Who? Not true, Owl hooted. Bear set out for honey, and she tripped on a root, root, root. Hit her head, caught Hawk. I saw. My grandma fell down, gasped Bumble. He peered in the window, and sure enough, grandma was asleep with a big bump on her head. Oh, poor grandma, Bumble cried. Then he had an idea. Grandma loves flowers, he said. So he ran to the garden and he picked every single one. Bumble smiled as he tiptoed past Grandma. He put the flowers in vases and jars and set them all around the room. She will be so surprised. <clears throat> Oh, now what should I do next? Little Bear wondered. He saw four pots of paint. <gasps> I know, he exclaimed. I'll paint the door for Grandma. At first, he could not choose which paint he should use out of red and yellow and blue or grassy green. In the end, he used... <gasps> all the colors. He painted a picture on Grandma's front door. Bumble smiled again. She will be so surprised. Bumble saw some dirty dishes in the sink. If you wash them very carefully, saving Grandma's favorite cup till last, a cup so fine its rim was trimmed with gold. 
Bumble held his breath as he washed that cup. And he held his breath as he rinsed. But just then, the forest birds came back, squawking. <gasps> what if they woke up Grandma? Bumble began to hurry. Bumble grabbed a cloth to dry. The cup slipped and it seemed to fly. Bumble reached to catch it, but he missed. And Grandma's cup fell. <gasps> Crash! Bumble ran. He stumbled to the door and tumbled and he hid. Oh no. Just look, look, look what you have done. Hoo, hoo, fussed Owl. Grandma Bear will be angry, you know, said Crow. You tripped, but you, you stripped the garden bear, Squawk Talk. Oh, Bumble heard footsteps on the porch and he peeked through the railing. Grandma Bear was there. <gasps> Bumble did it all, Codhawk. I saw. Bumble took a deep breath and crawled out. I, I wanted to surprise you. Oh, you did surprise me, said Grandma. But the birds were wrong. I like my beautiful door. And she shooed the forest birds away. And Little Bear gulped. But Grandma, that's not all. Oh, I picked all your flowers, Bumble wailed. Grandma just shrugged. We'll plant some more. But Grandma, I broke your favorite cup. The one with the glitter gold rim. My, my cup? She gasped. There's not another one like it anywhere else in the world. A tear slid down Bumble's nose. But that's true of you too, dear Bumble. There is not another bear like you. Not anywhere in the world. You are the best little bear in the forest. Bumble smiled. Should I make us some tea? Grandma pulled him close. Let's make it together. And so they did. Bumble and Grandma had cakes and mugs of tea with lots of lovely honey. Just like they like it best. The end. So we got two extremes there of a little bit of winter, maybe it was a spring snowstorm, and some spring flowers with Bumble. I hope you have a great day today and I'll see you tomorrow.